Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of A Chapter a Day, Keeps the Doc Away. My name is Alan, otherwise known as Heesui, and I'm from ReverseThieves.com, as well as the Speakeasy Podcast. And this time, I'm looking at The Seven Deadly Sins, Chapter 63, Arthur Pendragon. And we saw the Seven Deadly Sins, or at least Melodus, Ban, and Grouther kick a lot of booty in the last chapter. So... I feel like the author is like, you know, we've had enough of them. Let's see what everybody else is doing. Kind of get them in place. So when we go back to the seven deadly sins, you know, everything, all the dominoes are lined up. So we can have things really start to go down. And so it starts with Dreyfus and Hendrix still kind of eyeing each other, being like... Yeah, our whole argument has definitely not ended, but we got bigger problems. So, Hendrix is like, you, Dreyfus, take some of our best holy knights and go deal with the sins. Because, <laughs> and I'll just take on that whole army and King Arthur. And so on his way down there, he's like, Hendrix is like, this kid just pulled the sword from a stone not that long ago. So, I mean, he inherited a pretty decent kingdom, but 2,000 holy level knight troops? Where did he pull those from? Because he shouldn't have that much. And I don't know why he thinks he can take on us, but I suppose the worst time to uh, come down here, it would be hard for him to pick it. But uh, let's see what this truck wants. And so he goes down there, and it seems that, uh, one, King Arthur's army is all just an illusion. And uh, his cloaked wizard person, who who could the cloaked wizard person with King Arthur be? I mean, we know that there's a character named Merlin, so it could be anyone. I'm thinking Sir Gawain, or maybe Mordred. Who knows? But yeah, it looks like it's probably Merlin. and the, But the cloaked character undoes the illusion spell. And Arthur basically says he's there to see the king. And first, Hendrick's like, yeah, he's busy. And he's like, nah, I really should see him. And then he's like, well, he's sick. And he's like, well, my uh, wizard here can heal them. And he's like, oh, super sick. Like, so sick that... uh. You can't even uh, cure it with your magic. But uh, come back later. And uh, we don't need what you're just selling. And Arthur's like, no, nah, I think you do want what I'm selling. Because I think I can handle what's wrong. And then it just ends. Like, kind of on that ominous, or at least important line. And I really kind of have a few questions about Arthur here. Like, whose side is he on? He obviously knows that the king it has been overthrown, that there was a coup. And since most people don't know that, he's definitely at least somewhat informed of uh, what's going on. Possibly because he's got Merlin on his side, possibly because he has some other source of information as well. But it's very clear from the way he was asking that he kind of knows what's up. And Hendrix definitely has realized, oh, this guy knows what's up, fudge. Great. Another, you know, problem on my already growing list. But uh, I'm kind of curious. One, they still haven't told us who the person is. I suppose it's just supposed to be the big, you know, build up to it being Merlin or is it somebody else like maybe like Morgana Le Fay or Nimue or something you know you think Arthur then Merlin but there are other you know Camelot legend wizards because I feel like if Merlin is with Arthur I have a feeling by hook or by crook they're going to recruit both of them to their cause. 
I feel like it would be really weird if it was like the sixth deadly sin and then Merlin is over there. But we'll see. But if it isn't Merlin, I definitely feel like Arthur could totally be his own player and kind of have his own agenda and kind of be his own force outside of the sins and the Holy Knights and possibly, you know, against both of them or maybe playing both of them against each other. Um, well, yeah, maybe it is Merlin and uh, Merlin's going to spend most of the manga or at least uh, you know, a significant arc of the manga, you know, not on the side of the rest of the sins, kind of like how Nico Robin was, you know, part of the Baroque's works for a whole major arc. That is something that we will have to see. But I'm curious to see, you know, what is he actually doing there? Why does he actually want to see the king, you know, what is his relationship going to be with the sins? And uh, when do we get to get the re reveal of who Arthur's wizard is? Uh, but after that, we get uh, Elizabeth uh, and her kidnapper, who is once again also unrevealed, plops her down in the dungeon and then basically pops off to uh, help Dreyfus and all them. And since her captor didn't really have enough time to, you know, really assess things before dropping her in the dungeon, Hawk is like, whoa, I totally have still have to go to the bathroom and I can't, like, sully my honor as cute mascot character. Cute only in his mind. Um, so I got to, you know, do my business elsewhere. And so he slams through the door, letting them escape once he does his business in the hallway, which uh, can't be uh, too great for uh, everybody also still in the dungeon. And while Elizabeth's down there, she does uh, see that Marguerite is also in the dungeons. And it looks like they're about to have a conversation, which is going to be interesting to see what they exchange with each other possibly a little bit more about uh what marguerite has going on uh we missed the lightning powers and you know generally what's happened in the kingdom since she's been gone i got a feeling she's not going to make it out of the dungeon basically chatting with her sister is going to eat up enough time to get her caught but uh, at least we'll have a little more insight into what her sister's been doing, what's been going on since, you know, the manga started and she escaped. But uh, other than that, we see all the, you know, named holy knights getting ready to team up with Dreyfus and take on the sins. And, you know, pretty much a cool guy shot together, which is interesting for the bad guys, but... Uh, this manga seems to like some of the bad guys as much as the good guys, so not totally unexpected, but uh, interesting chapter. Really still curious what Arthur's deal is. I feel like he's the biggest wild card. We know where everybody else pretty much stands, but Arthur right now is totally so far on nobody's side, which generally makes him interesting, so... Hopefully we'll get to see a little more of what his deal is. Uh, I wonder if he's going to... Part of me wonders if he's going to fight the sins just to kind of like test them out and then be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This was just, you know, I wanted to see how powerful you guys are, but uh, I'm here with you guys. Or, uh, once again, or is he uh, totally just the third power and just kind of sitting in here trying to figure out, gauge everybody else so he knows like who's his priorities are you know do i have to take out the holy knights or the seven sins or what's going on and once again i feel like 
he's definitely got to have an interesting agenda. I mean, we know what the Sins want to do. And we've just found out at least what Hendrix publicly says the Holy Knight's mission is. So it'll be interesting. Still definitely fun. Still looking forward to the next chapter. All right. See you guys next time.